complete obsession. This marketplace for those that want to do a little bit, kind of do what worked last year, and so it's really not going to happen. It's actually going to require what most people are just not willing to do, more for less. I understand I will invest more over the next 90 days. I will likely see a lower return. But here's what I also understand. We're not the only ones in our marketplace that are going through this. This isn't the, we're not going through a PRG issue. We're going through a marketplace change. And in that marketplace change is going to be exactly what happens if you go back and look at the Fortune 500 list from, call it, you know, go back 20, 30 years ago and look at the Fortune 500 list and see how many of those companies are not only on the list, but how many of them are even in business. Half of them are bankrupt. But when they went through market changes, trend changes, technology changes, they just kept doing what had worked previously and they don't exist anymore. That will happen in your marketplace. You're going to see there, there's people whose names you don't know. All of a sudden you're like, whoa, where are they? They're right alongside us. They're right behind us. They're right in front of us. But holy shit, where do these guys come from? And within the team, I don't know your guys' production, so these are just total randoms, all right? So just don't, 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 don't worry about it. For all I know, you know, Blanca's your top producer and, Toma, and, and, and Thomas is brand new. That flips like that in a marketplace like this. If Blanca thinks, oh, I'm the top producer, so I'll just be the top producer. No, you won't. No, you won't. You'll be the top producer still. You can be. Some people are still on that Fortune 500. Microsoft is still there. Walmart is still there, but Walmart would not be there if they didn't realize they didn't have that they needed to pivot to a digital strategy to otherwise not be wiped off the map by Amazon. And if they kept doing what they were doing, then they would be Kmart. They wouldn't exist. So if Blanca does as top producer what she's been doing, all of a sudden Thomas is out in front of her. And that's within the team. And of course, that's just a microcosm of what you, what you, what's going to happen in, your, in, your, in, in the greater market. So the, the, the interesting thing is some people get really excited by this and some people don't. But it doesn't change reality that that's how it'll work. Now, what the cool thing is, is that when, when we're looking into an organization like yours, the proportion of people excited by it is much bigger, heavier than in a normal environment where the amount of people excited by that, it's not very many. It scares the shit out of most people. And they... They signed up for the HGTV version of real estate. And this is the work you're like, this is the, we're going to figure out who's really wearing pants version of real estate. But it is so freaking rewarding on the other side of it. It is, it, it, your life will change one way or the other, by the way, in the next 90 days. It's that simple. But it will not change if you come off this call and you have a day of motivation. It will not change at all. It will change if you have 90 days straight of it to the point where that becomes your new programming and your new normal. Because most will only be willing to do the crash diet. You go to a, you know, a permanent, sustainable, this is my new operating process. So I'm happy to take questions it's a simple, it's, it's an interesting like market where in theory, there's so much to say, but anything beyond what's been said is just keeping us away from the work we have to go do. Like it, it, it's, it's the simplest market to operate in as much as it's the toughest one that we'll see. Check this out. It is literally the toughest quarter we're going into right now that we'll probably experience in the entire market cycle the whole market cycle, this will be the toughest. What's happening just from the point of view of communicating with your clients. And Enrique, if this isn't accurate for your market, let me know, but I think it is. Look, you guys are uh, you know, in the middle of the financial hub, right? For California, outside of New York City, really for our whole country. So if you ever look at a stock quote, there's the bid, the ask, and the actual number at which that stock trades. So you might look at a stock and maybe it's a $40 stock. The bid is $39.90 and the ask is $4.10. And so the ask and the bid are pretty darn close to one another. This is like your Amazons of the world, your Microsofts, your Googles, like the, the, the stocks where you could put the order in and in one split second, boom, the order's filled, the transaction's done. 
that's the opposite of the world we live in right now. Right now, we're living in a world in which the bid ask spread is wide. Buyers want to pay $35 for that stock. Sellers want $45 for that stock and it's hard to get the transaction done. And that's why these next 90 days are so challenging but also so rewarding. That's where we're at. So when we're talking to our clients, helping them understand we're, that's the zone we're in. And I believe that over the course of the next 60 days or so, definitely the next 90 days, that bid ask spread will come together. It'll come closer. I asked my team today because we had our state of the company address for Q3 today. Um, I asked them, is it easier to do business today or two weeks ago? They said that is starting to become easier. And that the reason it's becoming easier is the seller is capitulating a little bit to what the buyers want. So that spread's coming together. That tells us we might even be past the most difficult time of this most difficult time, which is good news. But that's a little bit about where the market stands right now. I think I can help you and I can go to, you know, I know Enrique, you want me to just deliver a message and uh, the, the message is delivered. Like that is what's going to happen. Within all of that, I don't know how many minutes you have for me, but I think I can help you a lot in understanding inflation's role in this process. Inflation is the number one thing I'd be watching if I was you. See, when we're delivering market data, it's old data. Inflation's really telling us what's going to happen. You want to know when interest rates are going to stop going up? Watch inflation. Everyone's watching the 10-year treasury note. No, that's a reaction to what's happening. Because the 10-year treasury note, yes, it's the most correlated number to interest rates, as most of us know, over the course of the last many decades, but that's because there's not been inflation. In a non-inflationary environment, that's true. In an inflationary environment, go back to the 1970s. Paul Volk, inflation's out of control. It's the last time it was anything like what it is now. Paul Volcker comes into power as the Fed chairman. He's raising the Fed funds rate, which when we hear on television that they're raising rates, it's the Fed funds rate, not mortgage rates. He's raising Fed funds rate aggressively, very aggressively, like never seen before, three quarters of a point, a full point. The reason he's doing that is to tame inflation. So you actually get to a point where the Fed funds rate was sky high. Mortgage rates had been like 18%, 19%. The Fed funds rates way up here, but mortgage rates start dipping back down to the 10% range, even though the Fed funds rate is way up here. And the reason why is the marketplace determined enough has been done to tame inflation. If inflation is tamed, we can bring mortgage rates down. Because if I'm the bank, I can't lend at 4%. If inflation is 9%, I lose money. Inflation dictates interest rates. Something very few people understand. And even just, I'm trying to give you a little bit of dialogue and a little, you know, it's, it's, how do we win over our clients? We have to be enthusiastic. We have to be sharp and we have to be authority figures. And so we also have to, and the entire game of real estate is differentiation. So these are things that most, you know, real estate agents don't understand. I promise your clients don't understand either. Um, rents, higher rates, mortgage rates, all that does is increase rents. Higher mortgage rates equal higher rents. And the reason why is imagine you're a landlord. You're a landlord and the cost of ownership is here. So you can establish your rents. But what happens is if you push your rents way up, what are you doing? You're incentivizing your tenant to go buy something because the gap of ownership and rent becomes too much. You're just saying, hey, I'm pushing your rent so high, you might as well go buy something. But if mortgage rates rise, and ownership gets more expensive, I as the landlord can push my rents up and not turn you into a, an owner. So in California, people that own more than 10 units in multifamily, they have a 10% cap on um, how much they can push rents. And you guys might, may or may not have rent control that was already there. I don't know if you do. We never did in San Diego until the California law went into play. But landlords across the board are raising rents 8 to 10% right now because of those higher mortgage rates. When will that stop? When inflation stops. Now, 
caveat to all of it, of course, is that in the process of taming inflation, they'll probably crush the stock market more than it already is. And we'll probably go into a deep recession, all of which I hope happens because we have to take our medicine now versus taking much nastier medicine later. Um, I guess I want to call that opinion, but that's actually really fact. That's just what it is. That's what it is. Why that won't happen if it doesn't happen? Political pressure, but that's not my area. But people may or yeah. That's, yeah. For you. So a lot of this stuff, I mean, there's some people that probably understand it. There's probably a lot of people where it's maybe over their head. How important it is, do you think now, I know you talk about like we're entering a more of a skills-based market. How important is it, you think now for our agents to learn this stuff and study it and, and be able to communicate it? Oh, important enough that I've got 21 agents going to sales mastery, three days of sales mastery in Vegas on the 18th, 19th and 20th of this month. It's the entire game. People literally don't know what to say. And that's the biggest thing to keep staying in your way often of just executing. It's the biggest difference between, okay, Dan, I got you. I believe you. We're going to have to go do a lot more, but holy shit, if I don't feel confident about what I'm going to do, that becomes really unenjoyable to do. It becomes, that creates a lot of things. I, I don't, I don't want to go do a lot more of something I don't have that I'm not armed to do. I'd rather do less of something I'm not armed to do versus, yeah, I have the tool set, the skill set, and it becomes a lot of fun. It's the best 90 day game you'll ever play. So we're definitely in that space, Enrique. And I know you take all, all kinds of steps. I got to listen in a little bit on what you were doing before I came in. Um, you guys have awesome leadership in that respect. Right? And that's why I'm here. I respect so much what you guys are doing. But there's no question about it. This is a market where you, part of it is being honest with yourself. Like I came to this business in the last three years. That means I don't know a damn thing about what like an actual real market is. That's not an insult. That's real. That's a real, that's just reality. That is not an insult. That would that'd be true for my own kids if that was, you know, they're too young to work. But you get the point, like that doesn't make you a good person or a bad person. It makes you a person that got into this business three years ago. Understanding that that's reality gives you a much stronger chance to go put in the work that's going to be necessary in, these, in, this, in this time, in the season that we're in versus, oh, no, I've got this dialed in. I sold four homes last month and in the month prior. Yeah, that, that, was, that, that was not real estate. That was a totally bizarre, like if you watch Black Mirror on Netflix, that was like some alternate universe. That wasn't real. Enrique, anything else that you feel I could answer for you guys or share? Anybody out there have a question for Dan? You're getting, you're getting a couple, his time's really valuable. You're getting someone that leads a really, really high producing team. What's, what's one question? I'll take one question from, from the audience here. Anybody? Your top anybody? guy on your team, Dan, like the top, top agent on your team, what sort of production is that agent doing? And maybe what's something that they're changing right now? Like, like where are they, what are they focused on right now going forward? Well, he, he did a hundred and... $110 million on, I believe it was 98 or 97 transactions last year, all on the team. Um, his name is Brian Danny. And he's been with me for about eight years that he's been with me on the team. Um, you know what's really interesting, Enrique? Here's what, and I bet it's the same thing in your organization, whoever your top producers are. It's just interesting how we have a, we run a role play. Guess who's there? Brian. We have a training. Guess who's there? Brian. We have a team meeting. Who's never missed one? Brian. Just show up to the office on a random Thursday. Who's in his, who's, who's there physically there? Brian. You want to show up at 8 AM and find out who's it? Brian. And what's interesting is that on many, in many, in many ways, like, first of all, he's there listening to all the conversations around him because he comes in every day. So he's learning faster than those that are stuck in their house, only listening to themselves. 
A. B, theoretically needs it the least, but shows up the most. And by the way, that's also true for Derek Lundgren, for Perry, like all of our top producers show up the most, theoretically need it the least. I got it. Yeah. So Enrique, theoretically, right? I don't know if this is exactly true, but you'll get the spirit of what I'm saying. Enrique rolls out next week, some expired training or, hey, here's like the opening dialogue on an open house or how we treat. Awesome. I get it. You already know that stuff. You've been there. You've done that. Yeah. You don't need. Okay. Have you mastered it? If you can really tell me you've mastered it, then great. Then at least then contribute to the room and teach it. And what you'll find in teaching is you'll actually still realize, oh, wow, I thought I mastered it, but here's even more areas for improvement. If you haven't mastered it, you know, there's people that have read all kinds of books. There's, there's some, there's a readaholic in this room right here. You guys can point to him if you want and, you know, call him out who uh, is going to read whatever, 30 books this year. I don't understand the point. Reading 30 books, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand the point because will we have mastered any one of them? I think it'd be a lot more interesting to read three books, to, uh, you know, to, to read three books four times. So that's Brian. And if you ever want Brian to come into one of your sales meetings or anything, he's a really, you know, he loves to do that kind of thing. He's a big contributor to the real estate community. He gets, he gets a really big high off contributions. So he'd be happy to speak in to you guys. And he'd come from a totally different place than me because Brian has to sell a home today to feed his family. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. Dan, I think we're good, man. I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy guy. Um, but I think uh, we can take a lot from this. I recorded this too, so we're going to play it back and listen to it again because there's there's a lot yeah. a lot that you gave us. So, um, yeah, please do. And then if you want to go to, um, what's the easiest way for me to give that to you? Reach out to me and if, if you want, Enrique. I did this 37 something minute. Um, I called it the state of the market because and I addressed it to our clients because um, they all have so many questions and all they get is the scary news headlines or, you know, and I think it's an interesting thing for you guys to watch and those that can speak more intelligently about what's happening today. So you have to get, get into the mind of your consumer, answer the questions they're asking without them even having to ask them. And so well, if you want to reach out to me, I'll connect you with Mary, my, my marketing girl, and she'll figure out a way to give you the, uh, the, oh, yeah, that's actually really simple. Yeah. She'll just give you the re replay link. That's not complicated. <laughs> so she'll get you that. All right, cool, Dan. I'd appreciate that, man. Thank you so much for your time, man. All right, guys. See you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.